Good morning, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. For this Easter Sunday, we begin in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. And our text for today is from Job chapter 19, verses 23 through 26, where we read, Oh, that my words were written, that they were inscribed in a book, oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth, and after my skin has thus been destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, my eyes shall behold, and not another. In the name of Jesus, dear friends, when and I like to have our grandchildren over for sleepovers time and again, and it was sometime last year that uh, we had the uh, four grandkids over for a sleepover, in the middle of the night, I feel, I feel this small little hand start to rub my cheek. Now, I know that there wasn't a little person in bed with me when I went to bed, so I turned over and I see that it's my, my grandson Declan. He was about three, three and a half at the time. And he starts to cuddle in in the bed and starts to rub his face, uh, rub my face with his uh, little hand to feel my beard. Well, I, I turned over, went to sleep. He went fast asleep. And I asked my daughter, Rachel, the next morning, uh, does Declan usually do this? Rub, uh, get in bed and start rubbing your, the, the, your, your cheek? And she said, oh yeah, he does it a lot to Charles and I because he wants to make certain that uh, someone's next to him when he falls asleep so he feels safe and secure. Well, Job was all about feeling safe and secure in his life. In fact, he needed some security in his life. This Lenten season, we've been following the book of Job, seeing what the Lord has to say to us in times of our trials and tribulations. We see early on in the book of Job in our sermons that Job was a blessed man. And yet, Satan attacked Job and his possessions. Job knew all about insecurity in life and the insecurity that comes with life and the darkness that comes with insecurity. Today in our text we find Job sitting on an ash heap. He sits there with his shaved head, sores all over his body. Ten of his children have died when a tornado struck his home. It obliterated his property and earnings. Raiders from neighboring lands ransacked his property and then took all of his animals and killed all of Job's servants. Job at one time, as we see in the beginning of the book of Job, was one of the greatest persons, one of the greatest people in all the world. But now he's reduced to a pitiful, ghastly sight. And he seeks relief from his suffering by taking pottery shards and scraping his body and scraping the swords that, that's on his body. Job needed some relief. He was seeking relief, but he couldn't find any relief in his suffering. And so on this Easter Sunday, we read about this glorious news that Christ has risen from the grave. And he has risen. And today on Easter Sunday, we sing the glorious hymn, I know that my Redeemer lives. But what does that even mean? It means that we aren't immune or insulated from life's tragedies. It also means that we're not intimidated by them either. It means that we have someone always with us to comfort us and to be with us even when we're going through dark and troubling times. We have a Redeemer with skin on. Just listen to what Job has to tell us. First, Job tells us that I know. Job's living his worst nightmare. And what does he say? He says, what I feared has come upon me and what I dreaded has happened to me. Job doesn't say, well, I think or I suppose or I feel. He says none of these things. Although he has been tested and severely assaulted by the devil, he says something with certainty. I know. I know. He confesses that he knows for certain. There are a lot of things in life that we don't know. We don't know why we had to bury our loved one before we died. We don't know why the child has turned against us. We don't know why we lost that job. We don't know a lot of things. But instead of whispering sadness, 
when the giants of doom and gloom come into our life, with Job we can dare say, I know. I know what? Listen to what Job says. Thousands of years before Jesus came and died and rose from the grave, Job said, I know that my Redeemer lives. He doesn't say his Redeemer. He doesn't say her Redeemer, their Redeemer, or even your Redeemer. What Job says is personal and intimate. I know that my Redeemer lives. In the Old Testament, a Redeemer was a close relative, someone with skin on, who would rescue, ransom, recover, redeem anyone who had been or was in danger of being removed from their homeland or from their family. For instance, if someone had fallen into debt and sold himself into slavery in order to pay back the debt, the Redeemer bought that person back and gave him his life back and set him free. If a piece of property had to be sold, the Redeemer made sure that the title of the property remained in the family. And if a member of the family was hurt, killed, the Redeemer would pursue legal options and collect the damages assessed by the offender. That meant that whatever went bad, the Redeemer was there to make certain that good would be done. What was broken would be fixed. What was sick would be healed. Whatever lost would be restored, and what was dead would be made alive. That's why Job says, And after my skin has thus been destroyed, in my flesh I will see God. Job knew his Redeemer. He said, I know that my Redeemer lives. And who is that Redeemer? It's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus isn't some mystical, abstract, impersonal, vague idea. Jesus has a strong hand guiding us and a tender heart loving us when things go bad in our life, when we're faced with that long, dark hallway and we don't want to go down it. As our Redeemer, Jesus comes not simply to see that justice is done and that mercy is given, he does whatever is needed to bring God to our lives. He is mercy and grace. Jesus bears whatever needs to be born and carries whatever needs to be carried in order that our wrongs are righted. If a sentence is to be served, Jesus serves that sentence. He was damned on the cross for you suffered for your sins, he died, he paid the price, and whatever it took to set you free, Jesus was going to do that and did do that on Good Friday and Easter Sunday. And he did it all with skin on. Skin that felt the Roman whip at the place called Gabbatha. Skin that felt the blazing Palestinian sun as he carried the cross through the streets of Jerusalem. Skin that felt the thorns as the crown of thorns was placed on his head. Skin that felt the nails piercing through his feet and through his hands. Skin that felt the cross as he hung on the cross to be damned for your sins and mine. Jesus was attacked by Romans, scribes, Pharisees, and there was Satan throwing all of his ugly might at Jesus, taking aim and making sure that Jesus would be killed. And Jesus did die. But it was God's will that Jesus would die, so that three days later the angels would proclaim, He's not here. He's risen. I know that my Redeemer lives. The angels announced, he's alive. John outran Peter to the tomb. Mary cried out, Rabboni. The Emmaus disciples recognized the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread. And when he saw the scars of the living Redeemer, Thomas confessed, my Lord and my God. Death is dead. The grave is defeated. The gift of eternal life is yours absolutely, freely, certainly, without cost to you, forever and ever, because Jesus lives. People saw Jesus alive, literally. They didn't see a phantom or an experience, a sentiment. They saw him in the flesh because Jesus was physically and factually risen from the grave. There's a word for all of this. Grace. 
Grace is the amazing gift God gives us even when everything around us is going wrong. That the very core of our lives, when we are really the most wrong, it's all right because God forgives us all of our sins. Grace is the gift of power, the power to be free, to be the person God wants you to be. Grace is the promise that on the days when we can barely cope with the circumstances of life, we carry within us the faith that carries us, that tomorrow will be better because Jesus lives. Grace is the love poured out for you and for all so that the debts are paid, we're released from slavery, brokenness is repaired, death is defeated. What does it all mean? It means that whenever you're afraid of the dark, you're not alone. And why is that? You have a Savior with skin on. I know that my Redeemer lives. He lives all glory to His name. He lives Jesus still the same. Oh, the sweet joy this sentence gives. I know that my Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing of the Lord our God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you now and always. Amen. Christ is risen, is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen.